Can Galaxy Watch 6 finally bring Wear OS? At the levels of reliability that Apple Watch series provide, and how good actually the latest classic edition with the rotating bezel is. Let's inspect! Okay, here's the thing. Uh, this year, the gain of wearable devices is quite huge, and it's probably going to be the first year where Apple are going down to just 26% of the market share, not because they're selling less Apple Watches, but because other brands like Samsung are selling considerably more. And the good news for us is that Wear OS is suddenly an interesting operating system, again, mostly thanks to TicWatch and Samsung. So this episode is going to be about Galaxy Watch 6 Classic, one of the most interesting wearables this year. And of course, we want to see how it actually performs after all the software and hardware upgrades. Together with all these new upgrades, we can also see the price upgraded. There's an increase of about $30 for the 44mm Plain Watch 6 model, and the Classic Edition, supposedly inheriting the Pro Legacy, costs $399 for the smaller version, and $429 for the 47mm Edition, which you will get familiar with in this video. Should you need LTE connectivity, you'd need to pay another $50 or so dollars on top. Honestly, knowing that this is about 100 bucks more than the only meaningful competitor at the moment, TicWatch 5 Pro, I was quite skeptical at the start, but there are certain things you really need to get to know. Unboxing experience is decent, not spectacular, but certainly you get a good feeling when getting this pack. Just as usual, the early orders receive some gifts, and Samsung have been running numerous campaigns in order to let you buy this watch at a price lower even than the Gen 5 series at launch. You can certainly notice a lot of similarities between those two generations. The rotating bezel might look like a new thing, but if we go back three years ago, this very idea was already part of the Watch 3 running Tizen OS and has been my favorite ever feature of a Galaxy Watch. So, great to see it back! Sapphire crystal glass, thinner bezel, circular frame with sleek stainless steel, IP68 water resistant, sounds like there are a lot of things that Samsung did in the background in order to improve. The strap is also quite interesting with this mechanism, much easier for removal. Note that these bands are 20mm bands as opposed to the 22mm that we find with most other watches of this size. Just as usual for health tracking wearables, most of the sensors are at the bottom so that they are in contact with your wrist skin. Concerning the improvements on the inside, there are quite a few of them. The brand new dual core Exynos W930, 2GB of RAM, 16GB storage, 1.5 inch display, GPS implementation, dual band Wi Fi, Bluetooth 5.3, a 425mAh battery, a speaker, a microphone, and the operating system, which right now is Wear OS 4.0. Well, in terms of hardware, this here is probably the best that you can get out of the Wear OS world right now. A number of hardware improvements. Samsung have brought in a new system on a chip and they promise 18% increase over Generation 5. Quite decent, but keep in mind that at the same time there is a new Snapdragon wearable system on a chip, which is manufactured at a thinner process with supposedly better battery life, so it's quite interesting to see the actual performance values over here. Gonna talk about that in just a moment. Speaking of the battery, quicker charging, you can top up about half of that within around 13 minutes. That's quite a decent improvement. And also the display, which continues to be stunning, but now the peak brightness is 2000 nits, which is almost twice more than what we got with generations 4 and 5. But you know what? After speaking about all these hardware upgrades, I actually think it's not the hardware, but the software, which is the most impressive part. Not exactly because it runs Wear OS. I mean, yes, it's the only wearable operating system capable of challenging Apple Watch series, but comes with a number of limitations, challenges and very poor battery life. Samsung obviously kept whatever is good, and we pretty much have standard behavior of the buttons and the swipes. You can reconfigure their behavior partially. The double press in this case calls the recently launched apps, and you can set this to open any app of your choice. The other button is by default going to the previous screen, and there is still no way to properly customize it, which I personally find to be restrictive. Probably because I'm used to have this button configured for workouts. 
Speaking of which, you can launch them via a tile or often using a shortcut on your watch face. Yeah, the default watch faces are well designed, rich in information, but you probably know that already, especially if you have ever used a Galaxy Watch before. All the Samsung-made watch faces are free of charge, quite nicely looking, most of them customizable, and if you get to like a few of them, you probably would never think of any alternatives. If you need something different though, there are a number of options, most of them are available on Google Play Store and last year I've made a top 10 video with the best free or freemium that I use on a regular basis and you can check that video too, link to the video description. Choosing a more basic watch face is going to result into better battery life in always on display mode, but no matter how hard you try to increase the amount of hours between recharges, it will hardly exceed the 40 hour mark. Without always on display, you may reach a bit more, but with a lot of restrictions in terms of tracking. If I can point out to the most battery consuming feature, this would certainly be the continuous HR tracking modes. Going further with the software, Wear OS has a few key advantages and the integration with Play Store is of course among them. But looks like Samsung have used the opportunity in a very smart way and have injected a lot of their ecosystem inside. The Things app is here, Samsung Health, Samsung Wallet, even Bixby. If you think the watch is snappy, well, just open the apps list and you're gonna have to wait and wait and wait for a while. But most of the menus are quickly accessible. Still, for the record, I've never seen hiccups or glitches with an Apple Watch. Even the quite extensive ecosystem, which to be thoroughly reviewed we may spend hours, let me focus on the meaningful and unique features and those of them that other vendors still don't have, such as the ability to easily upload photos and videos to the watch, oh yeah, the applet in the app is so convenient and you have ready to use gallery and music player apps, looking at you TigWatch Pro 5. And something that I see for the first time with a Wear OS smartwatch and it actually worked, the ability to connect the watch to a new phone without making a factory reset. The procedure duration is about 10 minutes. Sadly, there once again are a few different software pieces that you need to install on your smartphone altogether in order to get the full picture. It's still as annoying as before, but let's say, given the good new features, I'm ready to focus on the positives mostly. Galaxy Wearable is for the smartwatch controls, it replaces the need of using the Wear OS app and is tidy and super functional. You can do a lot of customizations that are usually a no-go for other Wear OS models. Then we have the Samsung Health app, which is summarizing the available health tracking data, showing you details about your workouts and so on. I really wanted to tell you that the health tracking is already superb and extremely accurate, but despite all the improvements, there still are some things that need sorting out before it becomes perfect. For instance, sleep tracking is sometimes wrongly measured, and although it was more accurate than what I got with the Macefit Cheetah that I've tried a few weeks ago, it sometimes fails to detect the moments when I'm awake at night. The GPS tracking is on the other hand superb, especially if you have the LTE edition, it will be among the best ways to do sports by following routes, and even if you just use the watch for productivity enhancer, it's still gonna count, because you can use Google Maps and other navigation forms without needing your smartphone. In a matter of fact, think of the Galaxy Watch 6 LTE edition as a possibility to be completely independent from your smartphone and covering a substantial amount of its functions. Concerning the rest of the health tracking data, you can see many details about heart rate, temperature data, blood oxygen saturation, even blood pressure and ECG can be tracked if you're in one of the supported by Samsung for this feature countries. ECG is being displayed in yet another smartphone app called Samsung Health Monitor. If you already feel that I'm complaining, let me carry on. The remote camera app is also limited by region and model. Google Assistant is not installed by default, but you can actually replace Bixby with it. There is no ANT Plus support. The battery life is shorter than with the Generation 5. And unfortunately now, the price is higher.
Bottom line, Samsung actually make the Wear OS world once again fun to use, effective and interesting. And right now, if you have a Galaxy Watch together with a Samsung Galaxy smartphone, you're going to get experience which is very close to owning an iPhone with an Apple Watch. And that's actually quite a good news. On the other hand, if you already have Galaxy Watch 4 or 5, I'm not really sure jumping to generation 6 is totally worth it unless you're fans of this rotating bezel which in my opinion is the best for the series and of course only present with the classic edition and uh, one more thought that despite those software efforts by samsung if you go outside their ecosystem and probably out of the tick watch ecosystem where os in certain ways continues to feel like a mess so i really think that google should finally start working seriously on all these problems that community is pointing to and hopefully now with the growing user base they're actually going to listen to these people. So that's my take on the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic Edition. I hope this review has been useful. If that's the case, I think we deserve a like. Subscribe to the channel for more cool tech inspections since I, Michael, as usual, are going to point some ways to support my work here on the channel in the video description area. Thank you for watching this episode and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!